Now let's talk about balls that are hit in the gap. That means the alley, that means the space between two outfielders. What do we do? Quite frankly, it's a little bit different than when balls that are hit right at you. What happens now is, for example, if the ball is hit um, between left fielder and a center fielder, again, depending on what your philosophy in is, if the center fielder cuts in to try to get it and the outside outfielder comes behind, um, then you have a backup situation between the two outfielders. Then what happens to the first base person, or uh, the first base will still cover first, your right fielder may move in toward the second base area on an angle, and what happens between those two outfielders at that particular time, who doesn't get to the ball, can help that outfielder and help her tell her where to throw the ball. Again, balls to the left side of the field, your second base person will have second base. Maybe, again, your, your shortstop now will have to come out into what we call a relay situation based on how this ball has been hit. If this ball has been hit short and we've gotten to it, again, maybe you know this, the, the shortstop will still come out, but maybe she doesn't have to come out too far. Ball hit in a gapper, you think two bases as a, as a runner. You think relay defensively automatically. Automatically in gappers and, and, and you think relays. How far should the shortstop go out? Again, remember what we said earlier. Outfielders will have to make the longer throws. So maybe a rule of thumb is you have your shortstops who are relays for the left side of the field and your second base people who become relays for the right side of the field maybe they go one or two steps out the edge of the grass from the infield okay with weaker arms you may have to come out two or three more steps with stronger arms from the outfield maybe you only have to take one step into the grass you shortstops and second base people. Again, you've got to make adjustments, and adjustments are made in practice. Do it in practice, make your adjustments so that you're comfortable with it, so you can see it and do it in a game. Let's talk gappers now between center field and right field. Same thing happens now. The second base person will come out as a relay. You have your center fielder coming in, and maybe your right fielder backing up. Again, they're talking who has it. It's mine. And then the person behind will say, hey, throw it to, throw it to uh, second base, hold the runner, hold the runner at second. If the second base person comes out as a relay, then we know that the shortstop is going to cover second base. Remember also that the ball's hitting the gap on the left side now. With my shortstop coming over, I want my second base person to cover second base. Again, it's that shifting. It's that balance. Let's talk about now runners at first base with balls hit into the gap. Let's talk left side of the field again. Ball hit in right field, ball hit in the gap between left and center. Again, the relay is going to happen. My shortstop's coming out. My second base person is going to cover second. My third base person is going to cover third. My first base will also back up some plays, throw to second. Um, and my catcher will have the plate. My pitcher may come around halfway between third and home. Um, and as a play may come in to the shortstop, okay, as that relay and a cut, my pitcher better get her butt now right back into that circle because play is still live until the pitcher is back into the circle and the ball must go back into the circle. Let's talk about real quick, what about the ball that's hit in fair territory on the left side of the field and bounces into the gapper with a runner on first? We're not going to have two fielders going for the ball then because my center fielder is way beyond that. So it's my left fielder going for the ball. My center field will certainly help her tell her where to throw the ball. My shortstop's coming out again in a, in a uh, relay situation. My second base person is going to be at second. So, and my, uh, my right fielder then will come in okay, on an angle in case there's an overthrow at second. She wants to be there to prevent another base. Now let's talk about runners in what I call scoring position, the ball hit into the gap. Again, we're talking mostly grounders at this point. Ball hitting into the gap on the left side of the field. Okay, What's going to happen now is um, runner will probably try to score. You've got, again, ball hitting the gap. The shortstop will come out in a, in a relay situation. 
you have third base covered by the third base person, you now have the cutoff being the first base person. Your catcher is behind the plate. Your pitcher now can be behind third because you're going to have a trail runner coming from, the, from home plate all the way to second. Maybe she'll end up at third on an overthrow. So what's going to happen now, yes, you'll have a chance at the plate in this situation. If you get to the ball quick enough and your arm is strong enough, you may have a shot at plays to the plate. If you don't, then get the next runner. Try to get her, prevent her from being in scoring position. If not, try to get her to prevent her from being a third. So if the distance is so great with your arm, then make two quick throws. Make the throw to the shortstop, and then it's the shortstop's responsibility where she'll have to play the ball. And again, what she'll have to do is she'll either run it in based on how far she's out, or she'll make the throw probably at the third base because that is then a definite two base hit. Ball's hit in the gap on the right center, same thing. What's going to happen with runners on second? Hey, they're going to look to score. The um, second base person will come out. First base will act as a cutoff. The pitcher may come in between third and home. You've got the catcher covered at home. Again, um, if you don't have that opportunity, you try to have the opportunity at the plate. If not, it's a cutoff. It can be cut two. It'll be cut three. Try to prevent the runner from scoring. If not, try to prevent the trail runner from being in an advanced base situation. Worst comes to worst, she ends up at second. Make sure she stays at second. Don't throw it to third. So instead of making one long loopy throw, hey, it's better, in my philosophy, make two throws. Then throw a sharp line drive type throw to your second baseman. That is her responsibility now. Let her make the right decision. Maybe she runs it in, or maybe she throws it immediately to uh, the third base, or then to the cutoff at, 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 uh, at the pitching area. Let's talk about multiple runners with balls hit in the gap, again in general. Runners at first and second, or runners with, on first, second, or third, or as we call it, bases loaded. Again, with runners with, with balls hit into left side of the field or right side of the field, again, principles apply. Left side of the field, the shortstop will go out on a relay situation. Your first base will come over as a cutoff. Um, you'll probably concede that first run. Chances are you may concede that second run, but you don't want to concede that third runner in scoring position. So you probably will take it two throws and that throw from the left side of the field will go into the shortstop. The shortstop then may or may not throw the ball to second base, which is covered by the second base person, or if she does have a chance at the plate, she'll throw it with the first base person acting as a cutoff. Same thing, same situation with a ball hitting a gap with runners at first and second, first, second, and third, balls hit to the right side of the field. Second base person will act as a relay, the shortstop will come to second base, Third base is covered by third. The first base person is off the bag around the pitching area. The pitcher, again, will be, be between third and home base and where she'll be probably out of the way and also indirectly involved in backup situation. And certainly you have your catcher. Again, the same situation. You hit the cutoff. You hit the relay person. You concede probably the first run. If your arm is strong, you may have a shot at that second, that second runner. If it's not, you can see the second runner scoring, and then let's get that next runner. So maybe you throw the ball then based on your strength of arm and your position and your depth. Maybe again, you throw that ball to the second base person who then has to make that decision. Let's throw the ball to an advanced base side. Or if we, shot, we have a shot with that second runner, that second base person can attempt to make the play at home. 